Gronk's my friend. He comes on my show every week. He's he's been trying it. He's been really sad since missing that kick. He was on with Adam Vinatieri, like literally, like a like a puppy taking notes. What do I do? How do I do it better? He's been practicing, like legit practicing, giving it his all. And here you have John Cena just marching and saying he's going to miss that he can't do it. I tracked down that John Cena after some 15-hour pri uh, private flight, I'm sure. And uh, I got to talk to him about all things Gronk, all things Kick of Destiny, all things being an A-list superstar. I thought you were a Gronk fan. Grew up liking the Patriots. You hosted SNL back in 2016. You even wore a Gronk jersey in a sketch. Um, why did you turn on him and think he's going to miss the kick of destiny again? Let's get one thing straight. <laughs> I am a Gronk fan. Gronk's, Gronk's been involved in two WrestleManias. He's a WWE 24-7 champion. And boy, does he have uh, the energy of a thousand lightning bolts. But he took a job from me. He stepped in my neighborhood and tried to, like a, like a dog peeing on a fire hydrant, I just peed on. I was talking with the FanDuel people about doing a wonderful promotion for the Super Bowl, and then Gronk breaks through the wall like a Kool-Aid man uh, and just says, I'm doing the kick again. And, uh, and that was my meeting with FanDuel. They agreed to do the kick again, so I get the chance to bet miss. And I'm just going by the math. He missed last year, and I, I, I saw what, uh, what he had to offer, so he kind of cracks under pressure. So as far as me being a Gronk fan, yes. As far, be, as, far as me being a Gronk fan, going to make the kick of Destiny 2, miss. I'm betting miss all the way. I bet if Dua Lipa was kicking, you would have been on Team Make, John. Not if she took that spot from me that FanDuel promised me. Not at all. I, I'm a fan of Dua Lipa, but I'd bet her to miss too. You're a live performer. You've done it all. Would you be nervous having to make a kick in front of a Super Bowl audience live with 10 million I, women? I wanted to do the kick. <laughs> and I think that's what's interesting about what FanDuel's doing. And I'm, I, my hat's off to Gronk for trying again. And I've already put my my bets down. He's going to miss. Uh, but I think, it, you know, there's a lot of interest around the big game, so to speak. And there's a lot of interest around the Super Bowl. And anything you can do to, you know, it gets people together. The event brings groups together and it has a lot of excitement. Anything you can do to add to that excitement is great. And this is just another thing you can watch before the game and not during halftime. And it's just, it adds more excitement to a night where we're all together anyway. So, uh, and man, you can you can be on the on the good side of 10 million in bonus bets. So that, that, that that's good too. I kind of like your bad side though, John. Like I've been hyping him up this whole time. He comes on my show every week and now I'm sort of, I like the the heel turn I could possibly do here right ahead of the Super Bowl and I can ice the kicker. Let's workshop next year's. Make or miss, you're a supreme athlete, top of your game. Would you make or miss the following feats? Would you make or miss hitting a home run? I would miss. I, would, I couldn't hit water if I fell out of a boat. <laughs> would you make or miss a Mighty Ducks triple deke? How's your hockey game? Um, so I've been I've been called unorthodox in the ring, and I'm not. I don't know. You see me run to the ring a bunch. I'm not exactly graceful. Uh, throw me on two small blades. Put me out there. That's that's going to be interesting. I think I would miss that as well. I think we know Fandible's idea for next year. Make or miss. You're talking about the ring. Um, Backflip off the top rope right now. Oh no, 100% miss. I'll jump off that thing, but I, I won't backflip. No, that is a that's that would be an epic fail on YouTube. We would get some views off of that. <laughs> Make or miss? Could you beat Bobby Flay? Depends on the competition. I think I would make that. I would just have to choose my own terms. Okay, what's the thing that you cook best? What would you what What would you offer up? Cereal. <laughs> Make or miss uh, arm wrestling Gronk. Oh, arm wrestling's all technique. And that guy's so big. He's got those long arms. So he's got like the over-the-top power advantage. Man, I don't see me, I don't see me making a lot of these. Maybe that's why I'm betting miss too. Maybe I'm just a kind of a miss guy. This week we have huge news with the WWE signing uh, that big deal with Netflix. You talked about it, global exposure and growth and all that. Everybody's happy, but we have a chance here to make wrestling fans even happier, John. Are we about to see a lot more of John Cena on our screens? Man, um, I, I certainly can't promise that. Uh, I, I hope so. Um, the partnership is a great one, and I've spoken that um, – you know, my, my time as an in-ring competitor as, is coming to an end. I think the partnership with Netflix is fantastic because if there's one thing Netflix has shown, it's they'll invest in single evening stand-up specials. So I know The Undertaker does like a one-man show and tours. There's no reason why we can't now put forth, forth that effort in WWE. There's no reason why we can't 
begin to develop more un unscripted reality, which I would love to be involved in. I spend my days off at the WWE Performance Center and I enjoy the energy and the hunger of the youth. It reminds me of how I was 20 years ago. But man, my uh, my body is not 20 years ago. So I don't know if you're going to see a lot more John Cena in the ring. I hope uh, the moments that I have in the ring, I would love to grace the Netflix platform and reach that audience that, that Netflix has given us a chance to reach. I would love to see that with Netflix. And I love everything that they're doing uh, with live sports now. And it's just good for everybody that they're getting involved in that. Um, and talking about the end of your career, I always find it really inspiring, really heartbreaking, beautiful, hard, full of meaning when the greats, the best to do it, sort of move on. Now, you have this whole life of movie stardom and brands and partnerships, a vibrant personal life. You're everywhere. Does having that make it any easier? Because the way you talk about it, saying, I want it to be in London and all of that, and being so honest and open and vulnerable about where you are in your career is really incredible. Uh, thanks for saying that. I just, um, so uh, I'll, I'll down the tunnel for me. Um, I don't view myself completely defined by my work. And uh, it took a long time to gain that wisdom. So uh, whether it re retirement is on my terms or I just up and get fired tomorrow, uh, sure, that's a jagged pill to swallow. And so will eventually the last chapter of, of this two decade investment of my life. That's a that's a jagged pill, but it doesn't. It's not all that defines me. And I think having a comfortable balance with that, and that's the loving support of those around me, and um, the ability every day to see the the things that I'm grateful for in life. I think that helps with that. And from a, a spectator perspective or from a WWE superstar perspective, or if you're in the WWE universe, when, when someone who invests a lot and accrues statistics and monikers like the greatest of all time or the most electrifying man in sports entertainment, as a consumer, I want to see who the next electrifying man in sports entertainment is going to be. And as a superstar, I want to be that next one. So from a personal perspective, I'm fine. I just want to do what's what's best for the company. That's kind of always been my ethos. And if I was a superstar, I'd begin looking like, how can I pass this guy? And if I was a fan, I'd be searching for that next uh, exciting, you know, moment or, or or superstar that I can attach to to provide me with an escape. And that's that, you know, put put a smile on my face. And I bet you know right now as you go through this chapter you think about the beginning and let's not pretend that you weren't a football superstar either because you were <laughs> the all-american center for the pride of springfield college in massachusetts i have some connections up there believe it or not john that say that you used to freestyle at parties can you confirm or deny 100 percent confirm i i did that all through I, went, I lived at a uh, dormitory school in high school and did that to pass the time in high school and then it became uh, an opportunity to do it in college and that's kind of how I met my peer group in college. Uh, and by a happy accident, someone in WWE overheard me doing it in the WWE. And that was the beginning of this journey that we're on today. So uh, 100% confirmed. And uh, imagine that. That was kind of the, the flashpoint to, to start this all off. When is the last time you freestyled? Man, 20 years ago. <laughs> Honestly, that's a, yeah. I would, I would say safely 15 years ago. I hear you're pretty good. Your old teammate, Ray Rett. I don't know if you remember who that is, but he says- Of course I do. So Ray Rett told me that when he met you, he didn't know- He's the coach in New Rochelle right now, right? Yeah, New Rochelle. Give yeah, New Rochelle a shout out. I love that. <laughs> he said that he didn't know that linemen were allowed to look like you, that you're out there doing flips and tossing people around. I'm, I'm hard pressed to think that you didn't think about a career in the NFL. Uh, you know, I, I really found a home in the offensive line. And uh, football is such a fast game and a game of skill fluency. It's not like if you can play one position, you can play them all. And I, I was very humble. I, I'm six feet. I was 250 pounds. And again, like I think maybe uh, now that we're talking it out, here's some, some therapy. I feel like I owe you money. Um, <laughs> I knew that that was the, like I would play in college and that would be it. And hopefully I would be grateful to, to have a, a decent stay in college. And I knew my last game was the end of that chapter. So I think maybe that set me up for being okay with when a chapter ends and, you know, still look forward to the life you got uh, in front of you. The champ is here. Y'all have the Royal Rumble, WWE style this weekend. We yes. have a conference championship. So I have to ask, Chiefs, Ravens, who you got? Well, there is rumors surrounding Argyle that Taylor, Taylor Swift might have wrote the thing. Those are, those are rumors. 
But as the Argyle tagline says, the greater the spy, the bigger the lie. So uh, I got to root for the Chiefs in that case. Okay. And that has nothing to do with the game. It's simply to do with the mystique <laughs> around Argyle and Taylor Swift. And maybe Jason Kelsey, who plays center, who just retired, maybe there's some offensive lineman love going on there as he was championing his brother, Travis Kelsey, in the game. I see what you're doing there, John. How about I don't, I don't mind you spinning the web. I don't mind that at all. Go for it. <laughs> Lions or Niners? Oof. Man, that's tough. Because I'm just such an old school fan. Uh, I think of the Joe Montana, Steve Young dynasties. But then again, I also think like Barry Sanders, who's who's one of the greatest of all time, never... Never, I would like to see the Lions go. I would like to see the Lions go. Ooh, Lions Chiefs. That would be wild. It's the game that opened up the season. So just like that, it comes full circle. And we appreciate yeah. your time, John. And we are so busy. I can't even imagine. I mean, I know you only sleep like one hour a night, or at least that's what's reported. I don't know how you do it. But we've got No, no, no. I sleep plenty. I just try to manage every minute. So thank you very much. <laughs> Check out a new movie, Argyle. You do a Lipa back, which is amazing. And the new Hulu Originals talk series, everybody, uh, What Drives You, coming out soon. Oh, look at you plugging the show. Thank you so much. I was, John, I was trying to, like, pre-plug Ricky, like, the, the Farrelly movie for you. Come on. I'm on you I'm on Team did, Cena. And you did a great job, you, honestly. <laughs> and you brought up, you, you did fantastic. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute tell, pleasure. I will tell New Rochelle that you say hello. Tell them all to bet Miss for the Super Bowl for Gronk. Ooh, pick Miss on Gronk. <laughs> I'm, it. I'm doing it. It's that easy. Thanks, John. Thank you. The Kick of Destiny 2, live Super Bowl Sunday. Make your free pick now on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And up for grabs, Willie Make, Willie Miss. Cena says Miss. I still say make. He's rehearsing and practicing so much. Can't wait for that to all go down. Uh, and uh, hopefully a lot of people get a piece of that 10 million. Big thanks to John Cena, a very busy guy on like a million and five different press tours and 18 different time zones. And I just really appreciated the time. I do want to make a note that I sat down with him yesterday, mid-morning, before any of the Vince McMahon news came out with these allegations, with everything that's going on. And it's important to say, because it would be my responsibility to ask John Cena his thoughts on that, I believe. And I would have liked to have done that had I been given the opportunity. It wasn't live just now. It wasn't after that news came out. So... That all, of course, is unfolding uh, in real time, and I just wanted to get that out there. But big thanks to John Cena for hanging out on the show, and hopefully we'll see him in Vegas. Maybe he's in the commercial. I don't know. We'll do take a break right here. Matthew Hamilton will join us with more on the Chiefs offense. Make or miss kick of destiny. Get over to FanDuel Sportsbook and make your pick move.